Hello friends and welcome to my summoner guide. Summoner is a job in the caster DPS family and it's an extremely approachable job with a high damage output, great mobility and a repertoire of utility at its disposal. In this guide I will break down every ability and give you an insight of how to fully utilize them, along with summoner's opener and rotation and finish off with its stat priority. This guide will be aimed towards level 90 summoners, but I will do my best to make it as fully translatable as possible for the lower level experience as well. Without further delay, let's just dive right in. First up, we have Ruin 1, 2, and 3, Summoner's basic single target GCD spell. Early levels, you will use this spell often, but as you level and gain more summons, the frequency this spell is used will drop considerably. Treat this as a filler spell. At max level, you'll use this one to two times at most per minute. This will make sense the further on we go. We then have Outburst slash Try Disaster. This is Summoner's basic AoE GCD spell. And the same rule as Ruin, treat it as a filler spell. This is to be used on 3 plus targets. As a side note, most of Summoner's AoE is to be used on 3 plus targets, with some spells being damage neutral on 2 plus targets. So a Summoner can always just AoE on 3 plus targets, with no further fault. We then have Energy Drain slash Siphon. Energy Drain is a moderate hitting single target OGCD spell and Siphon the AoE equivalent, sharing a cooldown of one minute and both granting two charges of Aether Flow with no time limit to it which allows the summoner two uses of Festa or Pain Flare. Festa is a strong hitting single target OGCD spell and Pain Flare is the AoE equivalent. With Energy Drain and Siphon being on a one minute cooldown, we should be using our first Festas and Pain Flares in the opener and then making sure to press our Energy Drain or Siphon on cooldown. With Aether Flow not having a time limit, we can hold on to two of these Festers or Pain Flares for the next two minute burst window without losing any potency. This is of course a little optimization you can opt in and out to do depending on your comfort with the job and the encounter. Additionally, Energy Drain or Siphon will grant us one use of Ruin 4. This is a powerful AoE GCD spell with an instant cast. Although typically not used in our opener, we should be using this before it expires as this ability has potency that we do not want to miss out on and an instant cast which makes it great for when we need that extra movement. Now let's move on to the summons. First we have summon carbuncle which will summon carbuncle to fight by your side. Although SE took away its ability to auto attack it is still an important asset as it is used to summon your primals. The first summon we will be using is Aether Charge, Dreadrum Trance or Summon Bahamut all being the same thing, just upgrades. This will summon Bahamut who will auto attack the summoner's target and augment Ruin to Astral Impulse and try Disaster to Astral Flare. These simply deal more damage and have instant casts. While under this effect, the summoner is also granted access to Astral Flow and Enkindle. Astral Flow channels the currently active summon's power to perform a special action. In the case of Bahamut, Death Flare, which is a powerful OGCD AoE spell. Meanwhile, in Kindle can only be used while Bahamut or Phoenix is out. More on Phoenix later though. This will simply command Bahamut to use Akmorn, a powerful AoE attack. Now it is important to catch these two OGCDs during your party's raid buff window as they are your most potent abilities. Overall, this effect lasts 15 seconds and once it expires, will grant us access to Ruby, Topaz and Emerald Arcanum, which allows us to summon Ifrit, Titan and Garuda. Before we move on to the summons low, let's briefly cover Gemshine and Precious Brilliance. Gemshine is our single target GCD spell we will be using while we have an active summon that isn't Bahamut or Phoenix. And the same thing goes for Precious Brilliance, which is our AoE equivalent to be used on 3 plus targets. Now do keep this in mind as we break down the summons. First up we have Summon Ifrit, and this will briefly summon Ifrit to unleash a powerful AoE spell on the selected target and fire a tune the summoner, granting us two charges to Ruby Right or Ruby Catastrophe, which will replace Gemshine and Precious Brilliance respectively. Remember, Gemshine is our single target and Precious Brilliance is our AoE. So just remember that Right is always single target and Catastrophe is always AoE. Ruby attacks have a much longer cast than any other spell in Summoner's Kit, so make sure that we are at a point of the encounter where we do not need to move during this moment. Additionally, while fire attuned, the summoner's astral flow becomes
becomes Crimson Cyclone, which combos into Crimson Strike. Crimson Cyclone is an instant GCD gap closer, and Crimson Strike is an instant GCD melee ranged attack. Using another GCD between these two hits will break the combo, resulting in a significant potency loss. For example, you could use a Ruby Right into your Crimson combo and then finish off with your final Ruby Right, but you cannot do a Ruby Right into Crimson Cyclone, into Ruby Right, and then into Crimson Strike, as you would lose the Crimson Strike by using a Ruby Right in between. As the Summoner's Crimson combo is instant casts, you can use this to take advantage of the slow cast of Ruby Right and Catastrophe, so plan these accordingly so you have these instant casts for when you need them in an encounter. Then we have Summon Titan, and just like with Summon Ifrit, this will briefly summon Titan to unleash a powerful AoE spell on the selected target and Earth Attune the Summoner, granting us four charges to Topaz Right and Topaz Catastrophe, again replacing Gemshine and Precious Brilliance respectively. Unlike with Ifrit, these spells are instant cast and offer the summoner great mobility during this phase, along with Astral Flow becoming Mountain Buster, a moderate damaging OGCD AoE on the target and can be used after every cast of Topaz Right and Catastrophe, so make sure to be pressing your Astral Flow after every cast. Lastly, we have Garuda, and just like with previous summons, this will summon Garuda and unleash a powerful AoE spell on the selected target and Wind Attune the Summoner, granting us 4 charges to Emerald Right and Emerald Catastrophe. And you know the deal with these, these replace Gemshine and Precious Brilliance respectively. Just like with Titan, these casts are instant, but they also reduce our recast speed by almost half, again offering us great mobility. Meanwhile, our Astral Flow becomes Slipstream, a powerful AoE GCD spell on the selected the target which leaves a lingering AoE puddle on the ground and has a long cast. Just like with Ifrit's Ruby Right and Catastrophe, make sure to plan accordingly so we can get this cast off before having to move. As a side note, the order you summon primals is entirely up to you so keep this in mind when planning around a fight for when you need those instant casts and when you can get away with long casts. Although for the opener or 2 minute buff window, it is advised for the summon order to go like this. Titan into Garuda into Ifrit for 20 second buff windows if the majority of your party have 20 second raid buffs or Garuda into Titan into Ifrit if the majority of your party has 15 second buff timers. This ensures your slipstream will always catch raid buffs. During our first summon cycle our summon Bahamut will become summon Phoenix and similar to summon Bahamut this will summon Phoenix who will also attack the summoner's target and this will also augment Ruin to Fountain of Fire and Tri Disaster to Brand of Purgatory, again dealing more damage and being instant casts. Additionally, Phoenix will cast Everlasting Flight upon being summoned, which will grant nearby party members a moderate regen effect lasting 21 seconds. Meanwhile, Enkindle Bahamut will become Enkindle Phoenix, and this will order Phoenix to cast Revelation, a powerful AoE attack on the selected target, and Astral Flow will become Rekindle, a powerful heal on yourself or a selected party member, and leaving a regen effect, which will proc when the target drops below 75% HP and lasts 15 seconds. Just like with Summon Bahamut, this summon phase will last 15 seconds and once expires, grants the summoner Ruby, Topaz and Emerald Arcanum, allowing us to enter another summoning cycle and the process repeats, with Summon Phoenix once again becoming Summon Bahamut. Before we talk about summoner's final abilities, let's talk about Primal Rushing and when to do it. Primal Rushing is the act of rapid firing through our primals so we can summon our Demi, Bahamut or Phoenix as fast as possible, with the goal of gaining an extra Demi throughout an encounter or just lining up our demi with raid buffs. To do this, summon your primal like normal and prioritize your highest potency attacks. Then as soon as your next primal is ready, summon the next primal and repeat. This will leave behind some of your charges of your given attunement, but for the goal of primal rushing, this is worth it. Although this is very fight specific and only happens when downtime occurs or between dungeon pools, an easy way to think about this is will we lose a usage of our demi if we don't primal rush? Or what is the cooldown of our demi upon the boss becoming targetable again? or reaching the next mob pack. If it's almost back up and we still have our free primals to get through, it's more than likely that we should primal rush. 
Finally, let's cover Summoner's utility, starting with Searing Light. Searing Light is our 2 minute raid buff that provides the Summoner and the party with 3% more damage for 30 seconds. Make sure to be lining this up with your party's raid buffs. Next we have Radiant Aegis, which is our personal and provides the Summoner with a barrier for 20% of our total HP pool, and this is only usable while Carbuncle is out. So during Summon Bahama or Phoenix, this is unavailable as Bahama and Phoenix actually replace the Carbuncle during the period. Along with our Carbuncle being briefly unavailable during our Primal Summons as well for a few seconds until they get off their AoE spell. So this is only usable while Carbuncle is at our side. Next up we have Resurrection. This will resurrect a unconscious party member and it's an extremely useful tool so make sure to be using this liberally. We then have Physic and this is literally useless. Throw it in the bin. No but seriously this is bad as it scales off mind while Summoner uses Intelligence as their main stat. The only use for this really is low level content like Satasha. Finally, let's talk about crossroll actions starting with Adol. Adol lowers the target's magical damage dealt by 10% and physical damage dealt by 5% on a 90 second cooldown. Great to be used on raid wides and raid busters, so use this liberally. We then have sleep, and this puts all targets and nearby targets to sleep for 30 seconds. This is mostly useless in a raid environment as bosses are typically immune to this, but it can be used in niche situations like in deep dungeon, open world content, or in dungeons when the tank dies, just to give an example. We then have lucid dreaming, which will increase your MP refresh rate. Use this at around 7k plus MP to keep your MP at a healthy level. We then have swift cast and this will make the next cast instant with no cast time. This is great to be used with resurrection, slipstream or ruby right and catastrophe when needed for that extra movement. We then have sure cast and this allows spells to be cast without interruption and will act as your anti knockback lasting 6 seconds. Use this when an encounter is going to knock you back so you can keep uptime or just survive a mechanic that's going to knock you back. In the next part of the video I will show you the opener and rotation. Finally, let's go over the stat priority, which goes like this. Spell speed at the top priority until your GCD is at 2.48 to allow you six GCDs under Bahamut and Phoenix. 
After that, as much critical hit as possible, and when you can't have any more critical hit, a healthy balance between determination and direct hit. There is a high spell speed build, but I personally advise going for the high critical hit build as it's better for most situations. And that will just about wrap this guide up. Thank you so much if you've made it all the way to the end. I really appreciate your time. And if you did enjoy the video, make sure to give it a like. If you aren't subscribed yet and enjoy my content, then consider hitting that subscribe button for more content just like this. And if you have any feedback or just how you find the job, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to support me any further, then you can follow me at the socials below, Twitch for my live streaming content, Twitter for some silly tweets, and Discord for an active community. Also, if you're feeling generous, you can finally become a channel member now and have your name credited at the end of the video like this. With all that said and done, I shall see you guys in the next one. But until then, take it easy, stay safe, we out. Goodbye.